I think the first thing we need to understand is the difficulty in carrying out economic development in Gibraltar, and I'm the Minister for Economic Development, is that it's uh, a jigsaw puzzle. That is to say, we don't have what Andalusia has, huge tracts of land lying idle, waiting for somebody to come with money to develop them. So most of the time, we would have what we would call in other countries brown sites, that is, sites that have already been used once, which you then have to erase the buildings there and start from. In this case, we've got uh, lo quite a lot of workers that are staying in the uh, what used to be the Queen's Hotel, which was converted into a hostel because the hostel where they were before was sold out for development. And every time we sell something for development, we're doing it to bring money into your boat, right? And therefore, this is to replace existing hosting facilities and, in fact, to create additional capacity so that if we're putting in 300 rooms, for example, you could have one person per room. But it, um, a better idea, given the uncertainty of what's going to happen after the 1st of January, that we might then find that we need to keep more people in Gibraltar because it becomes very difficult to cross into Gibraltar and we have a situation where we know that it would be very difficult for this economy to function without frontier workers at the, at the moment. The, the emphasis seems to be on workers, yet people thought it was for the homeless. Generally, the people who are homeless happen to be workers as well. <laughs> Usually millionaires are not homeless. <laughs> but there are people who, where the, the family relationship has broken down, and then the, the, the wife and the kids usually stays with the home, and, 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 and the husband has to know where to go to, hasn't got friends, hasn't got relatives, and those people are currently in a workers' hostel. They are currently in the hostels that exist. Is, is there a danger, and this is going to sound really hard, but is there a danger of sort of setting up a ghetto when you get people, not workers, but when you get people with social issues all in the same place? Well, there's a danger with people that have a mentality about ghettos. I've never had a problem with my neighbours, whoever they might have been. The way I feel about Gibraltar and about being a Gibraltarian is that we're a family, right? And if we are a family, then the less competent, the less able, the more difficult members of the family are still members of the family. You don't just say, well, I don't want to see them, put them out of sight. But in fact, this is not that because we do a new hostel to do what is being done by the present hostel, there's suddenly going to be a new class of residents. The, the people who will be residing in the new one are the people who are residing in the old one. It's just that the new one has to have extra capacity because just how many people we will need to have residing in Gibraltar may be much bigger than we've had in the past if it becomes an obstacle race to get into work. Well, you say a family, and talking of the neighbours, they're actually complaining. There's a petition going round uh, complaining about further building works in the area. Yes, you see, I think, I think as a community, we've got to understand that there are realities of life. And, and uh, we've had uh, 10 million visitors a year coming from Spain no longer coming. We had cruise liners coming from Spain, no longer coming. We've got more aeroplanes coming from UK, less aeroplanes coming. And the government has had to borrow money in order to carry on paying for things that otherwise were being paid by the revenue that was coming in before, which is not coming in now. The level of uh, expenditure that we have in Gibraltar is high for a community our size, higher than in most other communities of our size anywhere in the world. And if we want to retain that level of expenditure and that lifestyle, then we have to replace what we lose. And we cannot replace what we lose without putting buildings up and creating noise. You know, it's, it's quite simple. I mean, you know, I'm quite happy living on a, uh, you know, Tina Baked Beans, but not everybody is. When is a project due for completion? I'd rather not live on baked beans, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> when is a project live for, uh, due for completion? I have no idea, really. We haven't even got planning permission yet. I mean, you know, this is just the first stage. Yeah. So. What are you looking at? What sort of uh, cost do you think? How much do you, what no, do you say, a room? Look, all that we've got now is a, a concept that has got to go to planning. 
we don't do anything about costing or anything else until we see what comes out of planning. I mean, it would be uh, a not very efficient use of resources. Part of my job is to make sure resources are used efficiently. If we did all the work for something that then gets rejected because people are able to object, and if all the neighbors in that area decide to object, the, the Public Service Commission may decide that they don't approve it, and we would have spent money on something that is not going to happen. Is this aimed at temporary workers? Is that uh, what you have in mind? Look, the present people that are in the hostels uh, are predominantly Moroccan workers. They were, it was called the Moroccan Workers Hostel originally. It started off in casemates, it's been in many different locations in Gibraltar. And now they're Gibraltarians. They're former Moroccans, now Gibraltarians, and now they are on the waiting list for housing because they're entitled, like you and I are. So uh, it, it was intended to be permanent for immigrant workers who would not be rehoused by the government. It's not permanent anymore because the people that are there now have become Gibraltarians since they went into the hostel. They were not Gibraltarians when they went in the first time. We hear uh, Dr. Jose Garcia, the Chief Minister, talking a lot about a no-deal Brexit plans. Uh, listening to you, I'm sure that you're doing your own no-deal Brexit plans as well. Uh, look, I delivered a plan in writing in the manifesto. The National Economic Plan is called the Post-Brexit National Economic Plan. That is a plan that assumes the worst-case scenario of a no-deal situation which I have been predicting as the most likely scenario since 2016. Well, we've got like a week left before a deal can be struck. Are you still of the same opinion? Well, it's quite obvious that there is a greater likelihood that I will be right now than in 2016 when the possibilities were that I would be wrong.